Well, it's all for the money now. President Trump is on route to Osaka, Japan for the G20 uh, talks and particularly on that China trade tip. Are we getting closer to a deal? There were a number of fascinating developments today that hint, and I want to stress hint, maybe we are. Welcome, everybody. I'm Neil Cavuto. Kristen Fisher now at the White House on some of those hints of a deal that might not be immediate could be in the works. Kristen. Well, Neil, President Trump is optimistic that he'll be able to cut a deal with Chinese President Xi Jinping on the sidelines of the G20 summit. But if they are not able to cut a deal, then President Trump says that he's already got a plan B. My plan B is that if we don't make a deal, I will tariff, and maybe not at 25 percent, but maybe at 10 percent, but I will tariff the rest of the uh, $600 billion that we're talking about. So we have uh, much more than $300 billion worth of products. Now, what's going to happen then, all of those companies will move out of China, most of them, and they'll move to other places like Vietnam and other places that take advantage of us, and we'll start working on that, too. Now, if President Trump were to move forward with that plan B, it would mean expanding his tariffs to virtually everything China ships to the United States. Originally, he said those tariffs might reach 25 percent. Now he's saying they'd likely start at 10 percent. But administration officials are hopeful it won't come to that. Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin said today that the trade talks were nearly complete until China reversed course. I'm hopeful that we see a deal, but there needs to be the right efforts in place. Uh, we were about 90 percent of the way there. I think there's a path to complete this, but we'll see where we get. The talks start on Friday with the Treasury Secretary and U.S. Trade Representative sitting down with the Chinese Vice Premier. That's on Friday. Then on Saturday, Presidents Trump and Xi will sit down. It is poised to be the biggest bilateral meeting of the entire G20 summit. And, Neil, that's really saying something since President Trump is also going to be sitting down with Russian President Vladimir Putin as well. Neil? Just amazing. All right. Thank you very, very much. In the meantime, where is all of this going then? Republican strategist John Thomas, we've got Democratic strategist Robin Byro and a stock swoosh founder, Melissa Armo. Melissa, I ended with you. The read that we were getting earlier on is that they're making progress. That, you know, talk that uh, maybe the tariffs won't be 25 percent, maybe it'll be 10 percent. The Chinese delegation, we're getting late word, meeting in Osaka ahead of the formal beginning of the talks, I think tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of bits and pieces there. You know, you string them together, you start getting hopeful, should we? No, but okay. <laughs> oh, God. they didn't warn me that you would not be the optimist. I'm so sorry. I hate to be a negative Nelly, and I'm really a positive person. Right. And obviously, I'm also pro Trump because I believe he's going to get a deal done with China. However, that being said, I don't have 100 percent conviction it's going to happen this summer or possibly even this year. And here's why. Every time they make a little process, but it's like taking 20 steps forward and then you take 12 steps back. Right. And yeah. that's what it is. And I wouldn't be at all surprised if, in fact, they get close to a deal again, it shuts down and then Trump puts on these other tariffs he's threading and then watch the market. Poof, just well, he, right he, like that. you know, to her point, he did sort of throw in an added thing against uh, Vietnam, right? That, they, you know, they're watching them in a trade policy with them. Last time I remember, I mean, they, they, the Vietnamese uh, were the ones who were luring a lot of businesses ticked off about dealing in China. Come to us. So now these businesses, they went there and now yes. they, they could be boomed twice. What do you think of it? Well, I think that China is highly motivated right now because growth in the private sector has been really slow. Uh, so they're, they're highly motiv motivated to make a deal. It's whether or not it's worth the political cost to them. Uh, so that's where we have to dial down on this. Uh, the, they have three red line issues. They won't move on the first two, keeping the tariffs in place and uh, unilaterally reimposing tariffs. Um, but I think we can negotiate on the third, which is the, adjusting the quantum number uh, on the number of, tr of trade goods. I have no idea what you said. That sounds brilliant. <laughs> sounds very no, 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 no. Yeah, he's yeah. very good. He's so smart. Yeah. He leaves me in the dust. <laughs> but well, you know, the one thing I, I was noticing in this is, you know, it's a, maybe to Melissa's point, you got a little bit of sugar and a little bit of salt. Mm -hmm. And then the, the salt was the U.S. sort of directing um, all Chinese companies uh, not be dealing in any way, shape, or form with our companies on 5G technology. And that sort of upped the ante a bit. It did. Look, Trump's plan B that he talked about with Maria this morning of increasing tariffs on a broader on a broader range, I think it's exactly— I think he was making that up on the fly. 
Probably right, <laughs> but I think his instincts are exactly right here, Neil. Look, we're going to... Do you really think there's a, a pattern to this? There's a, there's a strategy? Yeah, I absolutely do. Trump's basic premise is we've got a bad business partner named China. No and doubt, but he then, you know, threw the, the Vietnamese things out. I'm not dismissing his yeah. smarts. I don't want you to misinterpret me. I'm just wondering, well, where are we going? I thought the focus was China, close to deal on China. Now, these companies that you urged to relocate not too long ago go to Vietnam, and now Vietnam's a focus. And, and it's like a bad Abbott and Costello skit. Look, I, I think the president will refocus right back on China. And, and politically speaking, this is a win. No matter, honestly, whether he gets a deal or not in 2020, it's a win for him. Because really? Trump, yeah, I do think so. Because Trump is the first. Those tariffs come into effect. By then, yeah, they would be felt. Right? Yes, but Trump is the first president in decades to say to be able to go to those Rust Belt states and say, look, I'm the only one sticking it to China and standing up for you. Well, some I, of them in those states are saying, you know, you're sticking it to what? Well, yes, exactly. that, that's, he's yeah, not going to not get elected if this isn't resolved. And it might not be resolved. It, I, I don't think this is going to affect him really, not getting elected. It's the elected. fact that he's taking action. I think this actually. No, there's something you said. I, I, I it is unprecedented. For him, it, it is, uh, but, but what I worry about is, and I caught a lot of that interview we had with Maria, um, I thought it was kind of, all right, we're doing this, then we're doing this, then we're doing this. Yes. And if I'm on the other side Buck of the table, shot. I'm wondering where we're going here. But he's good on the fly. And you got to hand it to him. Some people stink on the fly. He's good on the fly. That might have been 100% on the Well, we don't know yet. We don't have fly. a deal. You but know? I, mean, I hope it works out to yeah, your point. Well, but yeah. Even I, you're cynical. You don't think it's going to I'm not cynical about it working out. Uh, I'm uh, cynical in saying that every time Trump tweets that everything is great, or Mnuchin says we're 90% there, the market gaps up, the market Well, rallies, he said he was misquoted on that. Really that he, Mnuchin, the Steve saying. Mnuchin, the Treasury Secretary, there is a path uh, to... To, to complete it. Well, I, I use that with diets. There is a path. To <laughs> of course. Right. That I never great. take it. Yeah. So I'm looking at this and whether the markets might be jumping prematurely. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And and look, I, I agree. That this is basically the way Trump operates, though. Uh, and I yep. think it's very much on the fly. Uh, but he's pretty savvy at some things. I think he knows what he's doing to a point. Uh, I'm just nervous. Like but are the American people going to look at him in this approach and I mean, really be your point and then the say, well, at least he's got an approach. I, 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 number one, he's got an yeah. approach and he's got guts. And number two, he's got to tell the Chinese that they think he's crazy enough. Right. Under, you know, <laughs> whatever it is, that he's crazy enough to go all the way and up the ante on tariffs. Here's and I think problem. he's projecting that. Here's the problem. Right. China wants The crazy something. thing or the strategy. <laughs> yeah, China, China wants something. They don't just want the tariffs to be right. lifted. They want something in return because the way it's been forever and ever and ever is the way it was. So in order for all Trump right. to lift the tariffs, okay. China wants something in return. And what that is, I don't know. And yeah. what I'm thinking they need is they need an expert. They need a person who understands Chinese culture to come in Too there and work for with that, a team. Yeah. Too late. No, it's not the, too late. the Chinese work culture with the thing. China. If you don't have that down now, you, good luck. <laughs> but I, seriously, you guys are great. I, Thank I, you. I, I just didn't understand where this ultimately goes. But it's still early. <laughs> on the fly works. On the fly works. You're on the fly. I built a career on it. All right. In the meantime, this other.